Hello, I'm Jeff Groff, Winter Tours Estate Historian. Periodically, people have asked me if we have any film footage of Henry Francis DuPont, and we do. Today, I'm gonna to show you a clip from a 1963 orientation film for visitors to Winter Tour. In it, you will see H.F. DuPont speaking. The other thing that a number of you may have heard is that he was difficult to understand, uh, that he mumbled, that even his family had trouble at times. Well, this will give you an opportunity to see what you think. And then at the end of, of the film clip, which is about eight minutes and includes uh, some touring of the house, I'll offer a few more comments. I hope you enjoy this. Named in 1839, after a town in Switzerland which had been the home of the ancestors of the first owner, three generations of DuPonts lived here. In 1951, the present building and its collection were given to the Winterthur Corporation, an educational foundation, and it was opened to the public. The donor was Henry Francis DuPont, one of the great collectors of our century, photographed here with his grandson, Henry DuPont Harrison. Among his many activities, Mr. DuPont serves as a director of the DuPont Company, Vice President of the Royal Horticultural Society of England, member of the Board of Governors of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and Chairman of the Fine Arts Committee for the White House. Mr. DuPont. I am glad to welcome you here, standing beside this pine dresser, which I first saw some years ago in the house of my friend, Electra Webb at Shelburne, Vermont, who later on made the Shelburne Museum just as I have assembled the rooms here at Winter Tour. I had never seen a palm dresser and thought it quite beautiful. I'm hoping you may see some piece of furniture here which will inspire you to make your own collection, proportion, color, arrangement to the smallest detail make or mar a room, particularly the placing of chairs at the right angle, which adds immensely to the charm and lived-in feeling. I hope also that you will be able to see the gardens. I spent even more time there arranging the height, size, color, and contour of the many beds of shrubs and flowers. In 1930, Mr. DuPont installed this room at Winter Tour. Here, he and Mrs. DuPont brought up their children and entertained their guests. Here, he began assembling the famous Winter Tour collection, primarily of objects made in America between the years 1640 and 1840, the great age of hand craftsmanship. The essence of Winter Tour is naturalness. Small, interesting objects are left casually about to preserve a lived-in atmosphere. These objects might be knocked to the floor and broken by swinging handbags, and so the ladies have been asked to check them. Winter Tour is unique. It cannot be described in a single phrase. It fits no one category. Its nine floors contain nearly 150 rooms, alcoves, and corridors from most of the original states. Let's look at a few of them now to give you a glimpse of what you will see this morning. This room is from a house built in Massachusetts in 1670. It is furnished with authentic pieces of the period. There are no reproductions at Winter Tour. But Winter Tour is considerably more than a collection of rooms furnished to give you the extraordinary feeling that the occupants have just left. Not only are the furnishings authentic, they are all of museum quality, interesting and beautiful in themselves. Collectors of American silver find Winter Tour's nearly 400 pieces an indispensable reference tool. The rest of us simply enjoy it, displayed naturally in rooms like this one from New Hampshire. Incidentally, you will find much of Winter Tour's silver illustrated in a book available in the reception room. Winter Tour is important to students of early American economics. The pottery in this room, for example, was imported to the colonies from England, Holland, and France. 
these imports added both elegance and utility to many early American homes. They also stimulated foreign trade. Students of American art find a treasure in Winterthur's collection of more than 400 paintings, prints, and drawings. This is a view of Perry Hall, an estate near Baltimore. It was painted by Francis Guy about 1806. It hangs over a mantelpiece built in 1764 for a house on Pine Street in Philadelphia by John Stamper, prosperous English-born merchant and former mayor of Philadelphia. Also in this room hangs a self-portrait by John Singleton Copley, America's greatest artist of the period. In addition to reflecting regional characteristics of the eastern seaboard, Winterthur's rooms and furnishings mirror the various nationalities that have produced the rich, complex culture of America. Contrasted with the aristocratic room from Philadelphia, this room and its furnishings are from rural Pennsylvania, where a great number of immigrants from Germany settled in the 18th century. The plaster molding, made by a German mason, might have graced the ceiling of a Baroque house in Bavaria. National cultures represented at Winterthur include English, Irish, Scottish, Dutch, French, and Swedish, as well as German. Winterthur is an encyclopedia for collectors of American furniture. More than 4,000 pieces are on display. This is the commons room from an inn built in Red Lion, Delaware, about 1800. It is furnished with Windsor chairs and with its unique bench, suitable for a room where men gather to talk, drink, and to play games. The candle in the window can be seen from the courtyard below. Students of American architecture find endless variety, not only in interior woodwork, but in exterior facades. This inn sign is embellished with an American eagle, most popular device in American decorative arts after the revolution. No one has counted the number of eagles in the Winterthur collection, and it may amuse you to make your own count as you visit the museum this morning. Look for them on furniture, pottery, metalwork, everywhere, including themselves in three-dimensional majesty. In Shop Lane are a number of shop fronts built during the early years of the Republic. They come from Virginia, Maryland, New York, and Connecticut. It was in shops like these that many of the 50,000 objects in the Winterthur collection were bought by their original owners, including hundreds of books and historic documents. been asked to assemble in groups of four and to stay together so that you will be better able to discuss your special interests with your guide, whether those interests be furniture, metalwork, glass, textiles, or architecture. The guides know the collections thoroughly and are eager to share their knowledge with you. They ask only that you do two things, walk on the runners that protect the rugs and carpets and refrain from touching any of the objects. You have seen that Winterthur can be many things to many people. It is a world center of scholarship for American studies. It is also a joy to look at. We hope you enjoy your visit and will want to come again. Could you understand him? Okay, I think he was working very hard to enunciate uh, the way he phrases uh, some of his sentences. There is a little bit of mumbling at times. And I think it's very reflective too of his generation, his background from the uh, East Coast, upper class elite. Uh, and a lot of that, that sort of intonation is very familiar that way from that time period. I hope you also notice the things he emphasized, color, proportion, arrangement, which were so important to it. In the later 1950s, early 60s, he was being asked what had inspired him to collect American antiques, American decorative arts. 
And he very much emphasizes the October 1923 visit he and Ruth made to Shelburne Farms in Vermont, uh, where they saw that pine dresser in the house of Electra and Watson Webb. They also on that trip went on to Beauport, Henry Davis Sleeper's house in Gloucester, Massachusetts, where again, the American collections, uh, the color, the arrangement were so striking to him. So these became things that he would repeat uh, again and again in his remaining years when asked what had inspired him to collect and to create Winter Tour. Well, this is a little glimpse into the past of Henry uh, Francis DuPont. Thank you.